The root account on Linux is very much like the administrator account on Windows in that you have the super user powers, you can do anything on the computer, and it's also a really bad idea to make this your everyday user. Now in Linux there's multiple ways to gain root access or gain root privilege. We're going to look at how to do those on the command line, but it's important again, don't use the root account as your normal everyday user. It's just a terrible security risk and it's just a bad idea. Now if you're on a system that supports the root password being active, you can just type SU and it'll ask you for the root password. If you know it, like if you're on CentOS or Red Hat, then you can log in and become the root user. Now on a system like Ubuntu or Debian, you don't actually know the password to the root user. In fact, the root user doesn't have a password on those systems, so you need to use sudo. Now to use sudo, you just type sudo and then whatever command it is you want to perform as the root user. So let's say you want to say ls. Well, now it'll actually do sudo the ls command. So we're actually looking at the current directory with the permissions of the root user. Now there is a little trick on Ubuntu or Debian. If you want to actually become the root user like you would on a CentOS system, you can type sudo su and then all of a sudden you're the root user. Now we don't even know the root user's password, but since you're actually executing su with root privileges, it allows you to become the root user on the system. It's just a cool shortcut. I do this if I need to execute a bunch of root level commands in a row so I don't have to type sudo every time. Now let's go back to our regular Bob user. Now, by default, the very first user on a system is going to be able to use sudo. But if you want to add somebody else to the sudoers group to be able to execute it, those definitions are stored in the etc. sudoers file, but you don't edit it directly. Instead, you edit, actually use the program vi sudo. Now, you do have to execute it with root privilege, so you have to have somebody who can become root or do something with sudo to add somebody else. So sudo vi sudo and it will open up this is the sudoers file and this is where we can add and change permissions to use the actual sudo program now you'll notice right here if there's a percentage before the user this is actually saying the entire sudo group and it says on all hosts it can become all users all groups and execute all commands with root privileges so if you want to give somebody the ability to use sudo you can just add them to the user group sudo and then they're automatically they inherit this ability like the initial user on the system. But let's say you want to specify for a particular user, but you don't want them to be in that group. You can actually just specify per user. So we can say, let's say Sally, and then we'll give the same permissions on all hosts. They can become all users, all groups, and execute all commands. And if you do this, Sally will then be able to use sudo. She may have to log out and log back in, but she's going to be able to use sudo just like Bob, our initial user on the system. Now there is one cool little thing this last all refers to the programs that they can execute, so all programs on the system. If you were to say no PASSWD colon all, what this is going to mean is Sally can actually execute all of the programs on the system as root, but she's never even going to be prompted for her user's password. Normally when you execute a sudo command, it's going to prompt you for your own password. But with this, it's never even going to ask for the username's password. Now this is a little bit dangerous. You can accidentally do some horribly powerful things on your system. But if you need to use sudo inside of a script, maybe this is something that will work because then you won't be prompted for your username's password. It'll just automatically do it. Anyway, we just save this file, press enter, and now Sally has the ability to use sudo on her system. Now on a system like Red Hat or CentOS where you can use SU because you know the root's password, you can still use sudo. Sudo is still installed and still probably the better way to go about it. Becoming root is always a little scary because then you can accidentally make some you know, serious changes on your system that might be bad. But to edit that sudoers file, you use the VI sudo program, which gives you just a text editor, but it allows you to make sure that you get the syntax right. VI sudo won't let you save the changes you've made if you make a, you know, a, a poor syntax choice or you do a typo in there because it doesn't want you to lock yourself out of your system. So that's just the safest way to go about editing the sudoers file. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.